Military parades are seen across the world and are often associated with a nation's independence, commemoration of a major victory or event, or anniversary of the founding of the country. Though not every country does them, when they are performed, often a new element, item, or component will be seen, showcased, or debuted to the public. This often comes in the form of a new weapon, unit, vehicle, but most often uniform or camouflage pattern, which was certainly the case in the 2009 Chinese National Day Parade, which saw not only a new series of uniforms and camouflage introduced, but also a few unique designs really only seen and used for a very short time. Now this video is in a way a continuation or supplement of two previous ones, the Chinese Type 07 camouflage family, as well as the cloud camouflage. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to check those two out, links to which can be found at the end. But to quickly establish everything, 2009 marked the 60th anniversary of the People's Republic of China, and the People's Liberation Army was planning to use the October 1st parade and adjoining ceremonies as a means to debut on a grand scale their new uniform system, Type 07 which also included a plethora of variants of a new camouflage pattern too. This pattern was China's step out of what many around the time saw as an older form of camouflage in favor of a new, modern digital one. Though glimpses of the new system had been seen before, it was always on a smaller scale, not often viewed by the general public. So what better way to show it off than the National Day Parade? However, things weren't quite solidified yet, as tweaking on not only the uniforms, but designs as well were still a little bit ongoing. But generally, the five primary variants seen during the parade were woodland, desert, urban, ocean, and jungle. However, the area known as Parade Village, where forces drilled and practiced, as well as performed choreographed shows and ceremonies that in a way had a level of friendly unit competition about them, leading up to the actual parade, saw a few other variants of the Type 07, as well as one very strange camouflage, the cloud pattern. So let's kick things off with a variant that had something of a history before its usage with the vibrant 2nd Artillery Corps camouflage. Talked a bit about in the 07 video, generally this pattern was a sort of offshoot of the jungle variant, though seeing a bit more stark colors. Upon initial inspection, you may think it just an interesting recoloring used as a flashy piece for practice and training. However, the color scheme shares a bit of a resemblance to an earlier custom camouflage worn by members of the 2nd Artillery's Engineer Corps from roughly 2005 to 2009. This custom camo appears to have used their standard woodland as a basis, which was then recolored to give it a pretty distinct look, with the browns appearing a bit redder in color, the greens closer to a forest hue, and the tan appearing a bit lighter. If you put it up side by side with the 07 variant, you can see the similarities, with the main difference being the digital stark white shapes. Considering forces chosen to participate in the parade had to go through months of training, which also included unit events and ceremonies through September, certain ones likely had custom or limited use uniforms made, or in this case updated to invoke a level of esprit de corps and to stand out a bit. But looking at the garment itself, it's worth noting that though it didn't actually see use during the parade, the cut of it was mostly the same as the Type 07 field uniforms bearing other variants of the digital design. The trousers saw a standard button fly, belt loops, two inset waist pockets, two pleated cargo pockets, and adjustable hook and loop leg cuffs, while the top featured a button-up front closure, adjustable button cuffs, hook and loop tabs on the collar for rank patches, as well as one over the wearer's right chest pocket for a branch patch, a set of vertically stacked bands on either shoulder where unit badging could be attached, an internal waist adjuster string, and five pockets, two chest, two waist, and one on the wearer's left shoulder. Finally, both saw the standard stamp on their insides, with this one having a manufacture date of July 2009. Now, there were a few slight differences, however, mainly that all of the pockets, though usable, saw their flap closers stitched shut rather than have a pair of buttons to secure them, meaning they could still be used, though accessing them could only be done through their centers. Additionally, a patch of the People's Liberation Army flag was stitched above the shoulder pocket. This was seen with earlier Type 07 uniforms and many of the ones worn during the parade, though one standardized and issued this nor any other flag was a directly incorporated part of them. Now, other uniform pieces in this unique design were also made, such as the accompanying patrol-style cap as well as helmet covers such as this unfinished one, which if you look carefully, includes small dots on its front likely to show where to attach the patch seen on most others of the time. Though this is just speculation, but some uniforms were likely unissued or unfinished due to the limited use of them, as well as their mixing with pieces in the actual Type 07 jungle variant, which ended up becoming the de facto uniform of the Rocket Force, a new branch which essentially reorganized and replaced the 2nd Artillery Corps in 2016. In a similar vein was the next pattern worn by certain airborne units. At the start of development of the Type 07, an urban color scheme was planned, which was much more muted, however, it never made it to general issue with only a few garments produced. Instead, 
Instead, a series of urban-adjacent variants were spun off of it, which ended up all more or less becoming directly affiliated with airborne troops as well as the Air Force as a whole. The first of which was this one, highlighted quite a bit before and during the parade by the 15th Airborne Corps. The pattern does invoke a level of urban to it with a predominantly gray background as well as light tan and brown colors. However, the most eye-catching element is the inclusion of the stark blue, no doubt to tie to the sky, which sort of diminishes its concealing capabilities. Though only the top is on display for this video, it is exactly the same cut as the artillery pattern, seeing the same features as far as pockets, front opening, PLA flag, and so on. However, it does show the Air Force's branch patch over the right chest pocket. Inside, it has a similar manufacturer stamp, again with a date of July 2009. On the other side is a bit of handwriting which roughly translates to 60th Anniversary Parade Airborne Troops. So either a former owner was the original user who commemorated it, or it got into the hands of a collector or dealer who added it to catalog it in a bit more detail. Now what's interesting about these two pieces is the usage of the same buttons, which are seen with more of the temperate camouflage uniforms of the 07 system, as others such as the arid and blue dominant ones like the Oceanic and later Air Force variants have ones that match a little bit more. This isn't too uncommon with certain pieces, as usually buttons will be covered up with a flap and not seen, so it was likely a time or cost-saving measure. Now comes perhaps the most unique of the uniforms, the cloud pattern. As mentioned in the short video from a little while back, this design has been the source of a lot of speculation, debate, and mockery since photos of it were captured and shared online. Though there is mention that a little bit of work was put into its camouflage and capabilities, the pattern was really only designed for ceremonial purposes, specifically for a handful of practice events and shows seen within Parade Village. Being a pattern made up of literally just bright blue to represent the sky and stark white wispy blobs for clouds, it was worn primarily by members of the Airborne Corps. One of the most significantly recorded instances of its use came during an event related to Huang Ji Guang, a soldier of the PVA, or People's Volunteer Army, who died in a sacrificial manner during the Korean War. The story goes that his unit, the 15th Corps, was ordered to neutralize four fortified enemy blockhouses during the Shanghai Ling Campaign, more widely known as the Battle of Triangle Hill. After successfully taking out three of them, forces turned their attention to the last and most defended one. Ji Guang advanced towards it tasked with throwing an explosive, which did go off and stop the machine gun for a time. However, after a few moments, the firing port was cleared and the gunfire resumed. Out of ammunition and realizing that Chinese troops were advancing and being killed, Ji Guang leapt onto the port blocking it with his body, which bought Chinese forces enough time to overrun and secure the position. Killed in the process, his actions have since been officially awarded while also revered by many across the country. As for the 15th Corps, it was reformed a few times eventually becoming the Airborne Corps seen today, and due to its legacy and connection with Huang Ji Guang, they often use him as a symbol and source of inspiration. This brings us back to the Parade Village, which had a number of forces in the cloud pattern surrounding a golden bust of him, which has been referred to as Huang Ji Guang, our military soul. So, in short, the pattern pretty much plays into the legacy and heritage of the Airborne Corps, while also differing it from many other units both look and design-wise for obvious reasons. But with that background out of the way, let's take a more in-depth look at the actual uniform. Sharing a generally similar appearance to the Type 07 standard uniform cut, the set is comprised of trousers that include very wide and large belt loops used to accommodate a much larger leather belt rather than a standard field one, again likely to emphasize the ceremonial aspect of it, a simple button-up fly, two inset waist pockets, hook and loop adjusters for their bottoms, and an elastic band used to wrap under the bottom of footwear to keep them from riding up or shifting. The top includes a straightforward button-up front closure, adjustable sleeve cuffs which are separated rather than attached, two hook and loop tabs on the collar for rank patches, pleated sections on the sides of the waist to give it a more formal look, two chest pockets closed via buttons, a vertically stacked set of bands on the wearer's left sleeve to attach unit insignia, a flag patch of china sewn onto the right sleeve, and finally a patch of a simplified version of the Airborne Corps emblem above the right chest pocket. Additionally, on the inside are integrated shoulder pads to help retain the more broad shoulder look for wearers. From photos, it appears that the only other pieces made in the camouflage were helmet covers, which look to follow the same design as one seen in the other camouflage patterns. Generally though, lining it up against standard 07 uniforms, you can see that things like the blue buttons are different in both shape and obviously color, the flag is that of the country rather than the PLA and placed on the opposite side, and it lacks a few other nuanced features like adjusters which allow for a bit of more use 
user personalization. However, the big change is the fabric, as it's very soft and smooth, which honestly feels pretty comfortable. Though in warmer weather for longer periods, it seems like it could get a bit hot and maybe even irritating with enough sweat. So considering all that, you can tell that these pieces were made special and more in line to a costume for a production rather than a fully-fledged military field uniform, which begs the question if this could be even considered a camouflage pattern. The answer to that question, though, is in many ways subjective and open to interpretation, so you'd have to be the judge. Either way, though, it's certainly a very unique and fascinating piece of uniform history. But with that, we've pretty much covered the camouflage is exclusively seen during the 2009 National Day Parade, its training, and events connected to it. It's also worth pointing out another variant of the Type 07, sometimes referred to as 09 Aviation, was first seen during training and drills for the parade, but not worn during it. However, considering it went on to be used by certain forces for a few more years, it technically doesn't fall into the Parade Exclusive Club. But don't worry, that'll be covered in a Type 07 close-up video once all necessary pieces are sourced. Finally, before we wrap things up, one question to be answered. What happened to all these pieces after the fact? Well, considering that the three of these were made in very small quantities, likely a few hundred each, from the start they were very hard to find, and the years since likely diminished them a little bit too. A few photos of some of the patterns and others of equal rarity have surfaced showing garments or bits of leftover fabric being used for casual or work-related things, as is often the case with military surplus. As far as finding sets, they are still attainable, though some patterns will certainly be harder to find than others. In fact, some reproductions of the cloud camo have recently been seen, which originate from this set as the design was scanned and the garment itself used as a reference. As for the ones showcased in this video, they were found thanks to our friend Shang Shi, who managed to track them down and provide them as well as a little extra information. You can also take a look at his ever-changing collection on Instagram, link to which can be found in the description. But that will pretty much bring us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If not, no problem at all, just be sure to check back every so often for more videos right here on Uniform History.